All right, guys, today I want to talk about some knives that you should try before you die. And hopefully that's a catchy enough title, but truthfully, there are a lot of really cool knives out there, but I think that there are a few that are for either reasons of their contribution to the community or really just solely for performance and what they, they offer the end user. If you are truly into knives, these are a handful of models of knives that I think that you should try at pretty much every price point before you die. So let's go from actually high to low. I usually go low to high, but let's mix it up a little bit with this one. So first off, I personally put in here uh, on my list a custom knife. And for me, this can be many different things. There are tons of really good makers out there. This just so happens to be my custom Gavco Nurse. I've been showing off a lot, I know, but I still love it. But there are ultimately a lot of good custom makers out there, whether it's Mayo uh, from Hawaii or uh, many other people, even custom like Mick Striders um, are really, really not half bad knives and really cool. And I personally think that the level of detail, the level of, you know, end machine work on most of these custom knives vastly justifies their price if you are a knife person. Once again, this is the type of knife that you're going to buy if you are really into knives, really into the kind of mechanics of how blades work and really appreciate all the end level finishing that goes into a blade. Once again, customs are definitely not for everyone, but if you've been in the knife game for a long time, I would heavily recommend you trying to find a personal, like a maker that really speaks to you, a design that you really can get with, and then, you know, try to pick up a knife from that maker. That's why I ended up choosing a Gavco Nurse, is because personally, Gavco is a maker that I really enjoy. I have always loved the Nurse design ever since it was released and this blade is just too cool so anyways you know this is definitely be a personal type of choice for you but uh, I really do think that a custom knife should be on your list up next we're gonna go with the Chris Reeve knives large and cozy now some people do find the small and cozy and Sabenza's more pocketable and more carryable for me I've always liked the large and uh, cozy's and large Sabenza's primarily because the small I feel is just a little too small but uh, this is a knife that um, whether you're one of those people that really enjoys a knife from the manufacturing and engineering standpoint of high precision you're going to love this thing. Or if you're looking for a knife that is a really good EDC blade or a knife that's very classy, that's gonna be able to be used in a wide variety of situations, you're going to really enjoy this knife. The, the Chris Reeve Sabenzas and Incosis are really just crowd pleasers. And I honestly mean that. I've shown my Sabenzas and Incosis to people who know nothing about knives and they immediately take a look at it, you know, feel it, Feel the smooth action and enjoy it so like whether you are showing this to someone who's not a knife person or has been a knife person for a long time both parties will love Incosis and Sabenzas equally and they are knives that you should try to get your hands on before you die for those reasons all right next one up is a personal favorite of mine and that is the Rick Hinder XM18. The XM18, once again, similar to the Sabenza and Incosi, do mean a lot to the EDC community. They were kind of foundational knives, but even if it isn't for that reason, this is once again another knife that I don't know if so you would count it as classy as something like a Sabenza, but it is another crowd pleaser because the actions on these guys are usually very squared away and the overall handling and aesthetic of them, I think it's just awesome. I think they have a pretty timeless design. It is undoubtedly more tactical with all of the jimping, you know, along the different areas of the blade, but um, or and or handle. But overall, this is going to be a generalized crowd pleaser. It is just a really nice knife with a really good action and really a joy to use. And once again, like I said, similar to my Incosi, I've pulled this out for both non-knife people and knife people alike, and everyone just loves fidgeting with the flipper, feeling how smooth that action is, and it's an extremely 
nice and fun blade to actually use. Like it's hard to go wrong with. You're not really gonna cut yourself with it unless you try. And yeah, so these XM18s, especially the three and a half inch versions like this guy are just really, really sweet blades. And I know that there are quite a few people in the knife community that have large collections of hinderers. And I think this is a really good representative case of why that is. All right, next one up, and this is one that I didn't originally have on my list, but by God, I have to throw it on here because I love my Strider. I have a real soft spot for this guy because I will still and always view this as one of those holy trinity knives. And you know, is it rough around the edges? Is there a little bit of lock stick? Yes and yes. But this is one of those knives that honestly I love because it is, I don't know if sloppy is really the right term for it, but because it's crude, like it's rough around the edges and that is what I like about it. It's also just a very polarizing design. Like if you take this uh, large and cozy here and you say like this is essentially, if you were to look in a textbook that has pictures and see like a knife, it would look something like this in Kosi, right? This Sabenza, or not Sabenza, but this Strider SNG, you know, just has such a radical look and radical geometry, especially in the handle where it just looks different. It honestly looks, if you want my opinion, more like the grip scales of a 1911 than it does an actual knife. And I think that is part of, it's, you know, like very polarizing, very striking aesthetic that makes it something that a lot of people genuinely like. Also too, you know, the notable tiger stripes, very much a Strider classic. And that's what I like. That's what I like about so many of these Striders is they are very classic knives that just have a unique style to them. And uh, yeah, they, they are what they are. I mean, you have flamed titanium handles, you know, with that freaking tiger stripe blade, like this is just very um, unique. And once again, a lot of people don't necessarily love the Strider aesthetic, but they're so polarizing that they are worth checking out. All right, the next two up are going to be more affordable options, but I think they are knives that genuinely you should not pass up. I've had multiple paramilitary twos in the past. This is my current one. It's a Rex 45 uh, Cutlery Shop exclusive, but uh, overall the action and the build quality and just the overall size and usability of the paramilitary two make it one of those knives that really you shouldn't pass up because it is especially for the price especially if you are in like the knife community and say you're collecting you know you're buying four five six hundred dollar knives this is just a really solid workhorse with a good blade design and super useful just overall so it's definitely one that you should check out if you don't already. I know, I feel like a lot of people get them early on in their knife collecting journey. And I think that's great because they are really probably one of the best knives for all around use. All right, last one up is the Emerson. Now this one in particular is a CQC8 Mini or Horseman as they're officially designated, but really any Emerson for that matter, I think is worth getting because Emersons once again, have a very unique contribution to the EDC knife kind of community or life. Um, but also too, they have a very unique design. Once again, there are companies that copy the wave feature, but Emerson was the originator of it. Also too, he's one of the only, uh, or Emerson is one of the only knife companies out there that like at production level is making true V ground chisel ground blades. So it's a very unique experience and a very unique knife. Once again, I like the Emersons for a lot of the same reasons that I like my Striders. And that is because they are built, you know, rough around the edges. Once again, they're kind of crude. And I do know that the more modern versions are more refined, but I don't mind, like I, I've had to tell people in the past, like I don't mind the rough around the edge kind of build quality of these knives because these are designed to be at the core users, users and abusers. So realistically, these things, I don't mind when they're rough around the edges because they're still just fine. They, they perform, you know, adequately. There's no issues as you can see, you know, the lockup isn't, you know, like uh, there's no lock rock or anything. Like these guys work and that's the whole thing. They are, they work just fine. They're great users and yeah. So that is the last one up on the list and one that I still think is worth checking out. Anyways, guys, that is my list of knives that you should try before you die. As always, God bless and I'm out.